everybody, my name is Markiplier and welcome to Let's Play The Stanley Parable. Now, there's really not a lot to explain this game if you... Top of the morning to you ladies, my name is Jacksepticeye and apparently some games kind of came out. Do you, do you guys know what this game is? I know, loads of people are talking about it, I have no idea what it is. Oh hey, how's it going? Uh, welcome to... Welcome to the Impossible Quest Part 2. You bros were crazy. YouTube has been around for about 16 years now. When it began, it was a small platform to share videos. It was supposed to be an alternation of sorts from Newgrounds, which was a go-to site for video and content sharing before YouTube. The site grew slowly at first, as memorable channels such as Smosh and Ray William Johnson blew up. This was the original YouTube, where gaming wasn't really seen anywhere. But not long after the launch, and YouTube began to appeal to a larger audience, the presence of gaming began to rear its head. Longtime channels such as PewDiePie, Vanos Gaming, and Markiplier rose from this new era of gaming. By 2010 and onward, a large section of YouTube was practically dedicated to gaming. Everyone loved these creators, for their fun and imaginative video ideas, as well as love for the games that they played frequently. But this golden era of YouTube gaming didn't stick around forever. It would be later in the 2010s that things would begin to derail into what YouTube gaming is known for today. So if you ever woke up in the morning and just stunk, yeah, welcome to my life. This is the stink bomb. You can throw dirty diapers at people, fart on people, make people eat onions, and do a laundry mini game. How did it all end up this way? Today, I'll be going over the story of YouTube gaming and how it has become a mindless field of content. Gaming has pretty much always been on YouTube, but the wave of gaming didn't come till later. It all started with PewDiePie, the most popular gaming channel on the site to this day, and who many consider to be the pioneer of YouTube gaming. His success inspired the start of many other channels down the line as he grew to new heights. Markiplier and Jacksepticeye are two of the most notable channels that grew after the original success of PewDiePie, as the three of them are often revered as the best gaming channels of the early 2010s. As time continued on, the gaming scene only grew. With popular game titles such as Minecraft hitting the scene, the potential of gaming channels only grew larger. Dan TDM, Vanos Gaming, The Game Grumps, and so many more channels exploded into popularity for their personalities and gameplay. Let's Playing became one of the biggest things to do for these gaming channels around this time, and many small YouTubers tried their hand at it to make these type of videos. I myself even tried to do Minecraft Let's Plays, but like every young kid trying to make it on YouTube at this time, I failed. Hey everyone, Dora Panda here. Welcome to a new. <gasps> Intro. That aside, a bunch of other channels kept growing. Around 2013, YouTube realized that a large chunk of the gaming community watched Twitch rather than YouTube. Twitch was an all-gaming streaming website where many creators would stream their favorite games. And at this point in time, that statement was actually true, unlike today. Since streaming didn't require editing and other details that videos required to be posted, streamers on Twitch were seen more often than the creators on YouTube. To combat this, YouTube released its own video streaming service, available on the same platform. This seemed to work, as it allowed viewers to connect to their favorite YouTubers more frequently and in real time. This wasn't the only time YouTube would try and get into Twitch's market though. In 2015, YouTube Gaming was released, but the success of it was minimal, and it later had to be shut down. Still, in this point in time, YouTube Gaming was still thriving like it always had. The style of the videos had changed a bit, and Let's Plays were starting to go out of the loop, but it was still the same lovable faces playing the games we all adored. But little did anyone know that YouTube was about to start its transition from really good gaming content to more questionable videos. And it all started with one game. Fortnite. In 2017, Fortnite was released, and as everyone knows, it blew up beyond expectation with the Battle Royale format. It was the rise of Fortnite gaming clickbait that soon paved the way for mass gaming clickbait on YouTube. Now, clickbait had always been a thing for a long time. 
It was a prominent problem among different video niches such as prank videos. There was definitely gaming clickbait back then as well, but Fortnite raised the issue exponentially. YouTubers that were looking to reel in audiences of younger kids in order to make a quick buck would make misleading titles and thumbnails to attract younger demographics. They knew that no one over a certain age would like their videos, but at this point in time, YouTube's range age had broadened since the original release of the site. Kids were making up a large amount of all YouTube viewership. So, as long as these clickbaiters could get the kids to watch and subscribe to their channel, they knew they would be able to make it big time. And that's exactly what happened. These channels became bigger problems as the late 2010s moved forward. At this point in time, some of the original gaming YouTubers who were adored in the golden days of YouTube had left due to various reasons. There were still big names like PewDiePie playing games, and they continued to get massive success, but it started to feel like as time passed, more and more of these clickbaiting money chasers were taking over. Fortnite wasn't the only game to add to this problem, however. Another huge example of the clickbait formula was Among Us. Many YouTubers found a simple way to draw on more young kids, which notoriously was the increasing IQ plays titles. It started as a thing that YouTuber disguised Toast would do, since his plays were actually entertaining and smart, but it became a caricature after a few months in the same title format. Even though there were all these terrible channels clickbaiting their audiences, there were still good new channels being created, right? Well, that really depends on who you ask. Many people who disapprove of the new YouTube gaming era point to the current Minecraft YouTuber situation. Since 2020, and even now, there has been a rise to a new set of Minecraft YouTubers who have seemingly replaced the ones everyone used to watch, such as DanTDM, Stampy Longhead, etc. Channels such as Dream and Tommy Innit have been dominating the YouTube Minecraft scene for a while, and for good reason. They do have a good thing going, as their videos do appeal to a wide demographic of viewers and can be entertaining to watch. However, many point back to how the original top Minecraft content creators used to be, and say the new ones are incomparable to the prowess of the older generation. These sections of the community, as well as many other communities, have felt the effect of the fall of YouTube. But how did things go from so good and promising to so terrible? YouTube has certainly been around for a long time, but it's fair to say that the golden days are long gone in the gaming community. The mass scale clickbait contributed a lot to this. As I mentioned earlier, these YouTubers only see viewers as dollar signs. They make videos that will lure in kids, so that they profit largely. But this isn't the only reason YouTube became what it is. Another factor is that the original audience for YouTube gaming has grown up. The kids that used to watch the original gaming YouTubers have become teenagers or even grown adults. It's one of the reasons that certain gaming channels have stopped uploading much or even at all. Both the audience and the YouTuber have become older, with more responsibilities and things to do besides YouTube. Another attribution to YouTube's change is the landscape of the site itself. The gaming world used to be dominated by certain games, which many channels would let's play. Nowadays, you don't see smaller channels or even some large channels doing the low to no editing videos. That era of gaming videos have passed. The new audiences, specifically young kids, are more interested in flashy editing and fast paced gameplay. That's also the reason why games such as Fortnite and Apex Legends became so popular, as they're fast and entertaining at every second, which is what appeals to that age group. Since younger kids make up more of YouTube's viewers, it makes sense that what they like to play is carried over into what they like to watch as well. The other YouTubers have to choose whether to adapt to this new generation coming in, or to continue with their regular content. Some, like SS Sunday, chose the former, which disappointed many of the older fans. So despite this, other channels didn't go down this route, and have either quit YouTube or have continued to make their content that fits how they used to do things. Finally, I think a big reason of the downfall has to do with boredom. Just like how the fans of diss tracks and vlogs have come and gone within YouTube, the videos the older generation YouTubers used to make have also come to pass. People don't want to keep watching the same type of content. Soon, this new era of YouTube will also meet its end, and a new style or format will rise. Whether you agree with it or not, YouTube has fallen from its original grace, and has become a money-driven land of clickbait since then.
In conclusion, YouTube is still a great content website. Sure, it's had its controversies internally and externally throughout the years, but you still continue to watch and support the creators that post good videos on here. The problem has mainly stemmed from the realization from certain YouTubers that making clickbait or low quality videos that appeal to a young audience is the best way to earn money, which is all they really care about. This is why YouTube was best back before people could really make any money on the site. Sure, the career part of YouTube made it easier for us to see our favorite creators, but it warped the minds of those who couldn't control themselves from wanting to cash out. Perhaps one day, things will return to a better state, but a lot of changes are in store if that ever wants to happen. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.